Last night, we had a guest called Monique Presley on to discuss the increased racialization, if that's a word, should be, of American politics. Civil Rights Commissioner Peter Kirsten now watched. He was infuriated by the claims Presley made. He'll be here in a minute to explain why he was. Stay tuned. Well, during last night's show, we interviewed a lawyer called Monique Presley. She came on to discuss the repeated injection of racial rhetoric into the national anthem protests and by extension into the American political discourse. Here's part of what she said. The issue is why there are protests in the first place and the people who are living terrified every day just walking down the street. So if you look at how we got here, we got here because African American men are disproportionately stopped, disproportionately searched, disproportionately arrested, and disproportionately killed per capita in this country. Peter Kirstenau is an attorney. He's a member of the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. He's a regular guest on this show. He saw that segment last night. He objected to it, so we asked him to come on and explain why he did. Peter Kirstenau joins us tonight. Peter, thanks for coming on. Absolutely. So what was um, your contention with that segment last night? Almost everything that you just played was false, inaccurate, and based on a false premise. Um, and it's a false premise that's been perpetuated for quite some time now. There's no doubt whatsoever that this country has a baleful history with respect to race. Blacks have been yeah. discriminated against in egregious ways. People have been killed, and it's something that's been relatively recent. And it's, there's no doubt that blacks have been targeted by cops. In a nation of 320 million people, they're going to be racists, and some of those are going to be cops. But for the last 30 years, that premise that blacks are disproportionately targeted, arrested, shot by cops is completely false and all you have to do is look at the Department of Justice statistics and we've looked at these kinds of things and the Civil Rights Commission their copious studies on this. Just for example, uh, and this is pretty bad frankly, the Justice Department stats show that blacks are in fact killed two and a half times more often than whites are by policemen. Huh. However, when you take a look at remember that statistic two and a half times more frequently but that's far less than what the data would predict given black crime rates take new york city for example blacks are not two and a half times more likely to commit crimes blacks in new york city are 35 times more likely to commit robberies than whites 38 times more likely to commit murders and 51 times more likely to engage in shootings regardless of whether or not it results in a homicide. So when you think, think about two and a half times versus 51 times, the type of police involvement that you would expect from those kinds of stats is far below than what would be predicted. And that has consequences in regard to what's known as the Ferguson effect. What we saw is, and Heather McDonald, the great scholar from Manhattan and Institute, has done a number of uh, studies on this, great work on this, testified before the Civil Rights Commission showing that because of these protests and the consequences of it, police withdraw from active and proactive policing, and sometimes the city administrations tell them to, as we saw with the mayor of Baltimore, the Obama administration had consent decrees which changed police practices, so police withdrew from active policing. That consequence is profound because despite the fact that we've had decades of a decline in the crime rate, right after Ferguson we saw a significant spike in violent crimes, most especially in those cities which witnessed the types of high profile shootings and protests that resulted in police drawing back. Except for, this is very interesting, Pew studies showed that 72 percent of police were less engaged in proactive policing as a result of this Ferguson effect, except for one cohort, black cops. Black cops are 3.3 times more likely to shoot black suspects than white cops. But even so, when you look at the correlative crime data, that is black involvement in crime versus police shootings, the number of shootings are far below that which would be predicted 
predicted based on crime involvement. And when you have the false narrative and you've got this perpetuation of all these protests and it causes the Ferguson effect, here's what the consequences are. Take a look at the data. Despite the dramatic uh, uh, decline in crime rates, in 2015, 900 more blacks were murdered than in the year before. In 2016, 900 more. So we had 7,881 blacks killed in 2016. The vast majority, more than 90%, by other blacks, not cops. That's nearly twice as many as the number of soldiers that were killed in the entire Iraq war and it's at least partially a consequence of this false narrative feeding this outrage which then feeds the protests which then results in a Ferguson effect and then the, sp the spike of the crime rates. Most of the people I think in goodwill may be ignorant of those facts and believe subjectively I've been pulled over by the cops and if you talk within your own little universe you believe that maybe you're being subjected or treated differently except when you look at the objective facts. Most people in good faith probably believe but are ignorant of the fact that in fact uh, the narrative is false. But the there is a cohort of individuals, some politicians, some, some yeah. political opportunists that are using this for a political imperative that's despicable because we have bodies on the ground. I don't think I've ever done a segment where I didn't say one word because I was so mesmerized by what you were saying. I don't, can't remember someone with a, that kind of command uh, of the numbers. Thank you. Peter Kirsten, I'm really glad that you came on tonight. Thanks, Tucker. I hope you will come back anytime. Thank you.